Hello, welcome back everyone. In today's new to pro Xiao guide, I'll be teaching you how to play Xiao, how to do some events trick on Xiao, as well as how to build Xiao. And as a reminder that I do stream on Twitch every other day, so don't forget to follow me on twitch.tv, as well as don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel. As it turned out, there's actually a lot of secret technique around Xiao that you can do that increase your damage by a very, very good amount. And now there's a lot of trick to cover, so I might be going a little fast. So anytime that you are unsure about something, feel free to pause, rewind, or slow it down using the YouTube slow down features to get a better look at it which will help you dramatically understand what is actually happening. Chao's primary gameplay style involves using his elemental burst to enter his transformation form and then spamming plunge attack. You should be casting Shao elemental skill right before you enter his elemental burst which will allow you to funnel the energy into Shao into your next cycle. When you're playing Shao, you should always be casting all your support elemental skill and burst first and then switch into Shao and do his elemental burst. If you're running with a animal battery which you pretty much always be running, be sure to cast the animal battery elemental skill right before you do the elemental skill into elemental burst on Xiao as this will allow you to catch the energy from your elemental support as well. Here is an example rotation where you start with Albedo elemental skill, Zhongli elemental skill, followed by Sucrose elemental skill into double elemental skill by Xiao. You'll notice that I only casted a single Sucrose elemental skill there. That is because casting two Sucrose elemental skills simply take way too long and does not always guarantee you to catch the energy before you cast the elemental burst on Xiao. So casting one Sucrose elemental skill on the first rotation is slightly better as that will ensure you that all the energy gets funneled into Xiao instead of having potentially missing some energy out. Doing a plunge attack with Finn 2.4 meter is considered a low plunge and will do lower damage. However, if you jump higher than 2.4 meter before you do a plunge on Xiao, you will do a high plunge instead which will result in higher damage. To be exact, after 75 frames of you jumping, you will be able to do a high plunge and this is considered a frame perfect plunging. However, it's very hard to time 75 frames exactly so it's recommended that you wait a little longer before you do a plunge. Just be sure to not wait too long because if you take too long you actually start losing out damage where doing low punch might actually result in better damage. If you're ever facing a group of staggerable enemy be sure to aim for the side of the group instead of hitting the center of the group as this will allow you to push the enemy toward the same direction and continuously AOEing them down. This allow you to hit them with the massive shout AOE and to push them toward the same direction. The height that you land at is where the AOE will come out. That means if you land on top of a geo construct you can actually move the AOE on shout a bit higher which allow you to hit enemy in the air such as the Thunder Manifest, Oceanid, or Rune Guard. You can also jump and then follow it with a elemental skill to hit them in mid-air and then knock them down back into the ground. If you do this, be sure to wait a little bit after your elemental skill before you plunge as this will allow you to land the plunge right after he lands on the ground and also hit a collision plunge in the middle. You can actually fit a very quick normal attack. This costs almost no time and it's basically just free damage so you should always be doing this. It also lets you stack the J-Wing Spear faster if you are using that pole arm. This technique will allow you to use sing shields even when you're playing Xiao. However, if you are wearing sing shields with your Xiao, make sure that you wait slightly longer, about a quarter of a second before you jump and plunge. This is because you have to wait for the sing shield sword to land before you jump, otherwise your sing shield sword will miss and will not do any damage. Following on this, you can actually do an entire charge attack and then cancel out your charge attack by doing a plunge here. This is commonly referred to as the jack technique, which lets you squeeze out a lot more extra single target damage. When you are doing the jack technique, make sure to not spam your left click as there's a exactly one frame difference between a low plunge and a high plunge so it's better to wait a little bit to do a high plunge which lets you do a little bit more damage. Contradicting to what, exactly what I just said however, if you're fighting a medium sized enemy, you should be doing low plunge instead as this will allow you to hit the plunge collision damage as well. In Genshin Impact, there is an additional plunge damage modifier which represents when you're doing a plunge attack and during the downward motion, you collide with the enemy directly, there will be an extra instant of damage that will be dealt and this is the plunge damage modifier right here. When you're fighting large sized enemy, it is very easy to hit the plunge damage modifier. All you have to do is hold W during your plunge and you'll hit it every single time. You know if you did the shout collision plunge if you see a extra instant of damage when you're doing your plunge attack. Using both the jack technique and the collision plunge damage will allow you to get a significant amount of single target damage. So if you ever plan on using Xiao in a single target environment, then mastering these two techniques is a necessary move in order to maximize them. Building Xiao is very straightforward. Starting off with the artifact, just pick two out of three between Gladiator, Chiminawa, or the uh, BB4 set. Uh, just pick whatever have the best subset combination, and that's the set that you'll go with. Weapon wise, anything between the Clementity Pole Arm, Staff of Homer, or the J Wing Spear are really, really good, as those are the five star weapon for him. If you don't have any of those, then using the Death Match or the Black Cliff Pole Arm is recommended as a four star option. And if you don't have any of those, then try to aim for a Fornius Lens, as it does have a little bit more useful passive for 
shell as it gives the ER. Speaking of energy recharge, you can get away with running zero ER if your shower is really strong and you can one or two cycle content. Otherwise, I'll recommend building minimally about 120 to 130 energy recharge to keep up the shower elemental burst. And if you have heavy energy issues, then it will be recommended to go even higher. Drafting a shower team is fairly easy. The first party member you should be bringing is a Anemo battery slot, which is either Sucrose or Jean generally. Jean does generate less energy than Sucrose, so if your shower is not geared enough, you might have to run higher ER. Otherwise, side you could be used it as a substitution. It's lesser recommended, but it's fine. It does generate energy slower than Jean does, and that's why it's lesser recommended. Don't really use Venti or Kazuya as they're just really better suited for your other team. Otherwise, after your Anemo battery, generally you want to bring a defensive option. That is either a healer or a shooter, which is usually Bennett, Diona, or the premium option, which is Zhongli. And of course, being Zhongli, he has the biggest shield of them all. If you're bringing Zhongli, then your last slot could be Albedo to do a double geo pairing. Uh, if not, you could just bring the Bennett to get a massive amount of attack buff. Otherwise, you could bring like sub DPS like Fischl or Sing Chu's, they also work. It is actually possible to bring Shanling with your Shao as the Shanling Paranado will stay on the ground even if you're doing your punch attack in the middle of the air as Shao. So, therefore, your Shanling Paranado can still hit all the enemies. If you thought Shaolin wouldn't appear in this video, well you're wrong. If you have high constellation style, there's also some tips and tricks you can do. If you have C1, even though you have free charges, don't spam all your free charges as one because there is a 0.5 second cooldown between generating energy between your charges. And if you take too long to spam all your charges, then you won't catch all the energy. So it's not really recommended to spam all three of your elemental skill to generate energy even if you have it. Uh, otherwise, if you have C6, obviously there's a C6 playstyle of just spamming all your elemental skill. But the most noticeable trick here is that at the end of your elemental burst, you want to proc this effect and then spam all your elemental skill while your elemental burst X expired it. This will allow the follow-up elemental skill to not consume stack but also to generate you a bunch of energy, which means you can entirely ignore any of the energy requirement on Xiao. Unfortunately, I cannot demonstrate any of this as I don't have a C6 Xiao as I'm a free-to-play player. Hopefully, this opened up your eye a little bit about Xiao and if you learned something new from this video, don't forget to like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more new to pro series. I'm really glad I started doing this entire noob to pro series to be honest because I think there is a lot of hidden tricks and tips that people don't know and people just don't really know how to maximize their character in general and this lead to some misconception like Chao is weak or Xiao is weak on single target when in reality there is a lot of tricks that give him a good amount of single target damage but majority of the player or maybe even some player are just not aware of it and they thought Xiao was weak. With that being said however I hope to see you all next time as well so don't forget to like comment and subscribe especially for new more noob to Pro Series Sky, and then I'll see you all next time.